In this video, I will show you how to perform crude operations on products using ASP.NET MVC, SQL Server Database, and Entity Framework. So I will show you how to create products, how to read products, how to update products, and also how to delete products. So to create a new product, we can click on this button. Then let's fill the form. Let's select the image. then submit so here we can see that we have this new product and to update this product we can click on this edit button so let's update the name the price and the description then let's upload a new image then submit so here we can see that the name, the price, and the image have been updated. And to delete the product, we can click on this delete button. Let's confirm. And here we can see that the product has been deleted. Now let's create a new project. So here let's select C Sharp, all platforms, then web. And then let's select ASP.NET with MVC, which is this option. So it is ASP.NET Core Web App with MVC. Let's select it, then next. Let's call it Best Store MVC. Then next. So here we can choose the version of the .NET SDK. For the authentication, let's select None. Let's select this box to use HTTPS. Then let's click on Create. Now the project has been created successfully, so we need to connect to the database. So we can click on Server Explorer, then let's create a new connection. In the data source we need Microsoft SQL Server, if you don't have this value then we can click on Change, we can select Microsoft SQL Server, then OK. And the server is available on my computer, so just here we have to write dot. We will use the Windows Authentication, and here we have to provide the name of the database. We can click on this drop-down list to select one database among the available databases, but in my case I want to create a new one and let's call it Best Store DB. Also we need to trust the self-signed certificate of the SQL Server, so let's click on Advanced, then under Security, we have to set the value of Trust Server Certificate to True. Then OK. Then OK. So this database does not exist and we need to create it. So let's click on Yes. Now this connection has been created. Let's expand it. Let's expand tables. And for the moment we don't have any table. Now we need the connection string that allows us to connect to the new database. So we can make a right click, then properties, and let's copy the connection string. And let's save it in the configuration file of our application, which is upsettings.json. So here let's create a new key. It is called connection strings. Then let's define our first connection, so we can call it default connection or first connection or we can give it any name, so I will call it default connection. And let's paste the connection string. So for the data source it is the local machine, the database is best store DB, we will use Windows authentication so here we have integrated security equal true and of course we will trust the server certificate. Let's save the file. And let's close it. So in this application we will connect to the database using Entity Framework. So we need to install the required packages of Entity Framework. So we can make a right click on our application. Then Manage NuGet Packages. Then let's click on Browse. Then we need to connect to the SQL Server using Entity Framework. So we need to install the package Entity Framework Core SQL Server. If you don't have this option here, then just here in this field we can type SQL Server. And we have this package, so let's select it. And because I created an application using .NET 7, I will choose version 7 of Entity Framework Core. So just here, let's select the version that is compliant with the .NET that I have, which is 7. 
then install. Let's click on OK. Then I accept. Now the package is installed correctly, so we need to install another package which is from Entity Framework, which is also called Tools. So let's delete this text and let's write Tools. And we need this package which is from Entity Framework Core. So this package allows us to use these commands. So it allows us to create migrations and also it allows us to update the database. So we need to install a version that is compliant with the .NET that I have. Then install. Let's click on OK. Then I accept. So now the package is installed correctly and you can see the available installed packages in the install tab. So let's click on installed. Let's delete this text. And these are the installed packages. Let's close this window. Now we need to create the application DB context class that allows us to connect to the database using entity framework. So this class is a service because it will be used by other classes. So let's create a new folder in our application. And let's call it services. Then let's create a new class. And let's call it application DB context. So this class extends the DB context class of entity framework. So just here let's add colon, then DB context. Let's import the required package, which is from entity framework core. Then let's create the constructor. So in the constructor, we need a parameter of type DB context options. Let's call it options and let's pass it to the base class. Let's save the file and let's add this class to the service container of our application. So let's go to program.cs and let's add application DB context to the service container. So here let's write builder.services dot add db context the type of the db context that we will add is application db context then let's provide this method with an row function for the configuration it requires a parameter that you can call options then let's read the connection string that we added to the file app settings.json so we can create a variable called connection strings. It is equal to builder.configuration.getConnectionString. And this is the name of the connection string that we defined in appsettings.json. So here we can see that we have this connection that is called default connection. So after reading the connection string, we have to provide it to the application DB context. So let's call options dot use sql server and let's provide it with a connection string now the application db context is configured correctly to use this connection string and to connect to the sql server and also we added it to the service container like this it can be used by any other class of our application let's save the file now we need to create a domain model, which is also called entity model that allows us to create a table in the database and to read and write the data from the database. So in this course, we will perform crude operations on products. So let's create a domain model called product. Let's create it in the models folder. And let's add a new class. Let's call it product. Then let's add the different properties that correspond to the different columns of the products table that we will create in the database. So first we need the product ID. We need also the product name. And to get rid of this warning, we can initialize the name with an empty string. Then we need the brand, the category, the price, the description, the image file name, and the date of creating the product. We can also annotate these properties to limit their length in the database. 
So we can limit the length of the name in the database to 100 characters using the max length attribute. Let's add the package of this uh, attribute. We can do the same thing with the brand, so we can use max length. We can limit the length of the category. So for the description, it can be longer than 100 characters, so we can provide it with the maximum length. And for the image file name, it can be limited to 100 characters. So here for the price, we are using the precision attribute. Let's add the required package. Now let's save the file. And let's add a property to the application DB context that allows us to create a table called products in the database. So this property is of type DB set. And the model that will be used is the product model that we have just created. And let's call this property products. So products will be the name of the table in the database. Now let's save the file and let's create the migration file. So we can go to package manager console. And here let's type add hyphen migration and the name of the migration file. Let's create a migration file called first migration. Let's press enter. So the migration file has been created correctly and this is the migration file that has been created and it will allow us to create the products table. So this migration file is available in the new folder called migrations. So here we have the first migration that has been created. Now let's update the database to create the products table. So here let's type update database. So the table has been created successfully. Let's take a look at it. But here we can see that tables is always empty. So let's refresh the connection. And now we can see that we have the products table, which contains these columns. Let's take a look at the data of this table. So we can make a right click, then show table data. So for the moment, the table is empty and you can fill it with some data. So let's make a right click on our connection, then new query. And here let's write the SQL query that allows us to fill the table. So we will insert into the products table, the product name, the brand, category, the price, the description, the image file and the date. So for the date, it will be the current date. So here we are calling get date to provide the current date. And of course we are providing the image file names. So to execute this query, we can click on this button. And here we can see that 30 rows have been inserted. Now let's see the data of the products table again. So let's make a right click on products, then show table data. And now we can see that we have 30 products. Now let's add the product images to our application. So I already prepared this folder that contains the product images. Let's copy it. And let's add it to our application. So we will add it to the public folder of our application, which is called 3W root. So here we can make a right click, then paste. And now we have this products folder that contains the different images. Now let's create the products controller that allows us to perform code operations on products. Let's create it in the controllers folder. So let's select MVC controller empty. And here let's select MVC controller empty and let's call it products controller. So we can see that by default we have the index method which is called the action that will display a view called index.cshtml. So the view index.cshtml should be available in the products folder in the views folder. So this is the views folder, but for the moment we don't have the products folder. 
So products is the name of the controller without the controller word. And we need to create the view. So to create the view, we can make a right click anywhere inside this method. So we can click here, for example, then let's make a right click, then add view. Let's select razor view empty, then add. And the view should be called as the name of the action. And here the action is called index. So the view should be called index.cshtml. So let's click on add. So this view has been added. So it is available in the views folder into a folder called products and it is called index.cshtml. Now in the index action, we need to read the list of products from the database and we have to pass this list to the view. So to read the data from the database, we need our application DB context, which is this application DB context that we already added to the service container. And to request it from the service container, we need to create the constructor of this class. So as a parameter of this constructor, we need to request the application DB context. Let's call it context and let's save it into a field. So we can use this button, then create and assign field context. Now we can use this context to read the products from the database. So here let's create a variable. Let's call it products and it is equal to context dot the name of the table in the database which is products dot to list now if we put the cursor here we can see that products is of type list of product objects and we need to pass this list to the view so just here let's write products and to read the list of products in the view let's go back to the view which is index.cshtml and here let's say that we need a model so let's add at model and the model that we need is a list of product objects. So let's provide the type, which is list of product objects. Now let's create the view. So first let's display the title of the page and you can display the text list of products. And to display it in the center, we can use this bootstrap class, which is text center. We can also add a margin bottom of five units. Then let's add a button that allows us to create new products. So we can create a div of type bootstrap row that contains two columns. This is the first column and this is the second one. So the second column is empty and in the first column we have this link which is a bootstrap button. And it has the text new product. So when we click on this button, we will execute the action create of the controller products. So here we can see that we are using uh, tag helpers. So we can use tag helpers instead of the traditional href attribute. Then let's create a table. So here we have a bootstrap table that has the table head and the table body. In the table head, we have seven columns. We have six columns to display the product details. So we will display the product ID, the name, the brand category, the price, the image, and the date. And in this column, we will display two buttons, the edit button and the delete button. Now let's complete the body to display the different products. So we can use a for each loop and for every product in the model. So our model is a list of product objects. So for every product in the model, we will create a table row. So this is a table row. In the first cell of the row, we will display the product ID. So we have to use at, then the name of the variable, which is this variable, which is of type product, then the name of the property, which is ID. Then we will display the product name, the brand, the category and for the price we are using the explicit razor syntax so here we are using parentheses and after the parentheses we are adding this character which is the unit then here in this cell we are displaying the product image so we are using the img element the source is the 
public folder slash the name of the folder that contains the images which is products so this is the public folder and this is the products folder then here we are displaying the name of the product and of course we are using the width attribute to define the width of the image so we can set the image width to 100 pixels then in this cell we display the date of creating the product so to limit the length of the date we are using to string and we are using this format so we will display the month then the day then the year and in the last cell we have two buttons so this is the first button it is called edit and this is the second button which is called delete so when we click on the edit button we will execute the edit action of the products controller and we will provide it with a parameter called ID that is equal to the product ID. So for the moment we don't have the edit action in the products controller and of course we need to create it later. We will do the same thing with the delete button. So when we click on this button we will call the delete action of the products controller and we will provide it with a parameter called ID which is the product ID. Now we need to add a link in the navbar that allows us to access to the list of products. So let's go to the views folder. Then here we have shared. Then let's open the layout file. So this is the navbar of the application. And for the moment we can see that we have two items. This is the first item which is the home item. And this is the second item which is the privacy item. So we can copy the home item. Let's paste it here. Let's change the text of the item and let's write products. And let's change the name of the controller. So the controller that we want to execute is the products controller. So here we have to write products. The action method that we want to execute is the index action. So we don't need to change the name of this action. Now let's save the different files. And let's test the application. So let's click on products. And here we have the list of products. So we can see that we have all the products which are 30 products. But here we can see that we are displaying the products in the ascending order of ID. Which means that we will display the oldest products first. And to display the newest products first we have to reverse the order. So let's go to products controller and just here let's reverse the order. So we have to add order by descending and we have to provide the name of the column which is ID. Let's save the file. Let's click on products and this time we can see that they are ordered in the descending order of ID which means that we have the newest products first. Now I will show you how to create new products. So to create a new product, we need a model of type DTU, which means data transfer object that allows the user to submit the product details. So we need to create a new model. And let's create it in the models folder. Let's call it product DTU. So this model will be very similar to the product model, but we don't need the product ID because the user is not allowed to define the product ID, but we need the name, the brand, the category, the price, the description. And here we don't need the image file name, but we need the image file itself. Also we don't need the date because the date will be generated on the server. So we can copy all of these properties. Let's paste them in product DTU. So we don't need the image file name, but we need the image file itself. So we can delete this part. Let's rename the property. We can delete this attribute. And it is of type iform file. So we will use product DTU to create new products, but also to update products. When we create a new product, the image file is required. 
but when we update the product the image file is optional so let's declare this property as optional and later when we create a new product we have to validate the image file manually also we don't need this attribute because it is for the database so we can delete it from here and you can delete the package from here then let's add some validation annotations so the name is required the same for the brand which is required the category is required as well and the price is required and the description is required let's save the file So in the page that allows us to display the list of products, when we click on new product, we will execute the create action of the products controller. So now we need to create this action. Let's go to products controller. We can copy this line. And let's create the create action. So let's call it create and it returns a view so we need to create the view and it should be called create.cshtml so we can make a right click here then add view let's select razor view empty then add and let's call it create.cshtml so this view has been created and of course it is available in the views folder under products and it is called create.cshtml so this view requires a model of type product DTU. So just here, let's delete this command. Let's replace it with at model. Then the name of the model, which is product DTU. So we need this model because we need to bind it to the form. And of course, the form will submit an object of type product DTU to the server. Now let's create our form. So first we can create a row that contains one column that will be displayed in the center of the page. Then we can add a rounded border to this column and we can add some paddings. And here we have the title of the page. So the title will be new product and it will be displayed in the center of the page. And of course here we have a bottom margin. Then let's create the form. And the form will be submitted using the post method. So let's define the method, which is the post method. Also, the form will submit an image to the server. So we have to define the ink type attribute, which is equal to multipart form data. Then let's create the first field of this form. So here we have a label, which is called the name. And we have another div of type column that contains the input field and a span for displaying any validation error. So this input field will be bound to the name property of product DTU. So name here is a property of product DTU. And here we are using this tag helper ASP4. Then here this span will display the validation errors related to the name if of course we have some validation errors. We are using this bootstrap class to display the validation errors using the red color. Then let's create another field that allows the user to provide the product brand. So we can copy this row. Let's paste it here. In the label, let's write brand. Then the input field will be bound to product DTO.brand. So let's delete name and let's replace it with brand. And of course, the span will display validation errors related to the brand. Then let's create another row in this form that allows the user to select the category. So here we have a label with a text category and we have a select element that is bound to product DTO.category. So here we can see that we have several options in this drop down list. So these are the values that will be displayed to the user and these are the values that can be submitted to the server. Then let's create the other fields of this form. So 
So here we will display the price and this is the input field that is bound to product DTO dot price and this is a span for the validation errors. Here we have the description and the description will be displayed into a text area which is bound to product DTO dot description. And of course we have a span to display any validation errors. Then we have a label for the image and this is the input field that is bound to product DTO dot image file. Then we need to create the last row that will contain two buttons, the submit button and the cancel button. So this is the last row. It contains two columns. This is the first column that will be displayed after an offset. And it has a button of type submit and the text is submit. Then we have the second column that will display another button of type link. It is a bootstrap button and it is called cancel. So when we click on the cancel button, we will execute the index method of the products controller. This means that when we click on cancel, we will display the list of products again. Now let's test the application. And let's click on new product. And we obtain this view. So the URL is slash product slash create. So we will execute the create method of the products controller. And here we have the form. So we can provide the product name, the brand. Here we have the list of categories. Here we can provide the price, then the description. And finally, we can provide the image. So if we click on cancel, we are back on the list of products. And if we click on submit, nothing happens. So we need to create another action in the products controller that will handle the submit request. Now let's create another action method called create in the products controller. So we can copy this method. Let's paste it here. This method will be accessible using the HTTP POST method. So we have to decorate it with the HTTP POST attribute. And it requires an object of type product DTO, which is the submitted data. So just here, let's add a parameter of type product DTO. First, we need to validate the image file manually because in product DTO, the image file is considered as optional. So if product DTO dot image file is null, then we will add an error to the model state, which is related to the image file property of product DTO. And the error message will be the image file is required. Now let's check if we have any validation error in product DTO. So if the model state is not valid, then we will return the view, which is create.cshtml, and we will provide the view with this object that contains the submitted data. So it is product DTO. So this object is already required by the view and is already bound to the form. So if the submitted data is not valid, then we will return the create view with the submitted data. Otherwise, we can redirect the user to the list of products. So we can delete this statement. And let's redirect the user to the index action of the products controller that allows us to display the list of products. Let's test the application. Let's click on new product. Let's provide the name. Then submit. So here we don't have any validation error for the name because we already have the product name, but we don't have the product brand. So we have the validation error. The category other is valid. The price is not valid. So here we have the validation error for the description. And also we have a validation error for the image. Now let's fill the form. Let's click on submit without providing the image. So here we can see that we still have the form data because product DTO is already bound to the form, but we have the validation error for the image. So let's provide the image. Then submit. And because the submitted data is valid, we are redirected to the list of products. Now we need to save the products. So we need to save the product image and also we need to save the product in the database. 
First, we need to save the product image. So we need to save the product image in the products folder of this public folder. So we need an object of type iWebOst environment that is available in the service container that allows us to obtain the full path of this folder. So we can request it in the constructor of this class. Then let's save it into a field. So we can select create and assign field environment. So to save the image file, we need first to define a unique name to this image file. So the unique name of this image file will be the current date using this format. So the year, then the month, then the day, then the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and the milliseconds. And in addition to the current date, we will add the file extension to this name. So file extension is available in productdto.imagefile.the file name and we will get the extension from the original file name using the method get extension and we will add this extension to the file name that we are defining just here. Then we need the full path where we will save the image. So the full path where we will save the image will be the full path of the public folder of our application which is this folder plus products which is the folder where we will save the images plus the unique file name of the image so this statement allows us to save the received image to this path then we need to save the new product in the database so in the database we can add objects of type product but we received an object of type product DTO. So we need to create an object of type product that we will save in the database using the received data which is of type product DTU. So here we create an object of type product, we set the name using the product DTO.name, we set the brand, the category, the price and the description using the received data of product DTO. For the image file it will be the unique file name that we created just here and for the date it will be the current date. Now we need to save this object in the database, so we can use our context. So we have to write context, dot the name of the table which is products, dot add, and we will add this product to the table. And of course we need to save the modifications, so we have to call context, dot save changes. Let's test the application. Let's create a new product. Then let's fill the form, then submit. So we are redirected to the list of products and you can see that we have this new product. So these are the product details and this is the product image. Now in products controller we need to create the action method that allows us to update the product. So if we go to the index page we can see that when we click on the edit button, we will execute the edit action of the products controller. So now we need to create an action called edit in the products controller. So this action requires a parameter called id which is the product id. So this id is already added to the URL. So if we go to index.cshtml, we can see that when we click on edit, we will add the parameter called id to the URL. So this id is the product id. So we need to read the product having this id from the database and we can use our context to read the product. So let's create a variable which is called product and it is equal to our context.products.find and find requires the product id which is this variable. So this product is of type product that can be null. So if we don't find a product with this ID, then product will be null. So now let's check if product is null or not. If product is null, then we will redirect the user to the list of products. So the action is index and the controller is products. Otherwise, if we found a product, then we will create an object of type product DTO using the data of this product. So this is an object of type product DTO that is filled using the data of the product object that we obtained from the database. 
Then we have to return a view and we have to provide the view with this object. Then let's create this view. So it should be called edit.cshtml and it will be available in the products folder under views. So we can make a right click here, then add view. Let's select razor view empty, then add. And let's call it edit.cshtml. So this edit view will be very similar to the create view. So we can copy all of the source code of the create view. Let's delete this code and let's paste the source code. So this is the product DTO that we are receiving from the controller, which is this product DTO. And it is already bound to the form. Let's change the title of the page. So here we can write edit product. Then we need to display the current ID of the product. So in this form, we can copy this row. Let's paste it here. In the label, let's write ID. We don't need this span, so we can delete it. And in the input field, we don't need to bind it to any property. So we can delete the tag helper. And let's replace it with the value attribute. So product DTO does not contain the product ID. So we cannot display the product ID using product DTO. Instead, we can add the product ID into a dictionary called view data, and we can display the ID from the view data. So let's go back to the controller. And just here. So we can add the product ID to the view data under the key product ID. We can also add the image file name to the view data, and this is the key. And also we can add the date of creating the product to the view data. So now we can display the product ID using this dictionary. So we can copy this text. And let's display it here. So we have to add at, then let's paste the code. Then we need to display the current image and the date of creating the product. So just above the row that allows us to provide the new image, we can create another row. So this is a bootstrap row that contains only one column, but this column will be displayed after some space. Then in this column, we will display the current image. So the source of the current image will be the public folder of our application slash products slash the image file name, which is available in the view data dictionary under the key image file name. We can add the width to define the width of the image and we can set the width to 150 pixels. Then after the image, we can display the date of creating the product. So we can add this row, which contains a label with the text created at. We have this input field, which is of type read only. It is not bound to any property of product DTO. Instead, we have the value, which is available in the view data dictionary under the key created at. So here we are using this bootstrap class and we are using read only attribute. Let's copy this text. And let's update the input field that, uh, that displays the product ID. So we can delete the class. And we can use this bootstrap class in addition to the attribute read only. Let's test the application. Let's click on edit of the product to the ID 31. And we obtain this interface. So here we have the product ID, which is of type read only. We have the current name, the brand, the category, the price, and the description. This is the current image, and this is the date of creating the product. So in the URL, we have slash products, slash edit, and we have the product ID. So we are executing the edit action of the products controller. Now, if we click on submit, nothing happens, and we are always at the same URL. 
So to edit the product, we need to create a new action in the products controller that is called edit. It requires the product ID that we want to update in addition to the product details, which are of type product DTU. Now let's create a new action that allows us to update the product. So we are in products controller. Let's copy the edit action. So this action will be accessible using the post method. So here let's add HTTP post attribute. And of course we need the submitted data. So the submitted data is of type product DTU. So first we need to read the product having this ID from the database. So here we will read the product from the database using our context. If product is null, this means that we did not find a product with this ID. So in this case, we will redirect the user to the list of products. Otherwise, we have to check if the submitted data is valid or not. So if the model state is not valid, this means that we have some validation errors. In this case, we can return the view, which is edit.cshtml, and we can provide it with the product DTO object, which is this object. Of course, we have to provide the view with additional data, which is this data. So we can copy these statements, and we can add them just here. But if the submitted data is valid, then we need to update the product image if we have a new image, and we need to update the product in the database. So first we need to update the image file if we have a new submitted image file. So we can create a variable called new file name, which is initialized with the old file name. Then if we have a new image file, then we will update the value of the new file name. So the new value will be the current date plus the received file extension. Then we will create the full path where we will save the new image. So it will be the full path of the public folder plus slash products plus the new file name that we defined just here. Then we will create a stream and we will save the received file into this stream. And of course we need to delete the old image. So the old image is available at the path of the public folder slash products. And this is the old file name. So this statement, the delete statement, allows us to delete the image that is available at this path. Then after updating the image, we need also to update the product in the database. So we will update the product name, the brand, the category, the price, and the description from the submitted data which is available in product DTU. And we will update the image file using new file name that is initialized here and updated here. So this is the product that we received from the database just here and we need to update it. So to update it in the database, we have to call our context dot save changes. And after saving the product, we will redirect the user to the list of products. Let's test the application. Let's update the product with the ID 31. Let's update the name, the price and the description. Then submit. So here we can see that we have a new name and a new price. Now let's update the image. Then submit. And this time we have a new image. Now I will show you how to delete a product. So when we click on the delete button, we can see that we sent a request to slash product slash delete and then we have the product ID. So now we need to create the delete action in the products controller. So this is products controller. Let's create the delete action. And the delete action requires the product ID. So we can read it from the URL. So first let's read the product with this ID from the database. 
If we don't find a product to this ID in the database, then we will redirect the user to the list of products. Then let's delete the product image. So this is the full path of the image, and this statement allows us to delete the image that is available at this path. Then we need to delete this product from the database. So we can use our context, dot to the name of the table, which is products, and we will delete this product. Then we need to save the modifications. And finally, we need to redirect the user. So we can copy this statement, and let's paste it here. Let's save the file, and let's test the application. Let's delete the product to the ID 31. And here we can see that it has been deleted. We can also add a JavaScript code that allows the browser to ask the user to confirm the delete request. So let's go to index.cshtml that displays the list of products. And this is the delete button. So just here, we can add the onClick attribute and we can add this JavaScript code. So here we will call the confirm method and we will ask the user whether he wants to confirm the delete request or not. Let's save the file and let's test the application. Let's click on the delete button of the product with ID 30. And here we have this alert. Are you sure? If I click on cancel, nothing happens. And if I click on delete, the product with the ID 30 has been deleted. 